Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino, and in today's video, we have another instalment in the Worst Tanks to Play series, and this is probably a contender for the worst tank um, in the game, and probably the worst tank that will ever be in the game as it currently is. Uh, it's definitely the worst tank that I've ever played, um, and I hope that I never have to play another tank that is as bad or um, even worse than this one. Uh, the tank in question is, of course, the Bear, or Bar, however you want to pronounce it. I believe it's pronounced Bear, um, but please let me know in the comments if that's incorrect. It's a German Tier 9 tank destroyer, and it leads on to the Sturm Tiger. And in prototype form, this was basically meant to be uh, it's been meant to be an SPG, uh, an artillery piece, um, but it just doesn't work as a tank destroyer in World War II. It's so bad in so many ways, um, and I'm going to run down all of the statistics why I think it's really bad, and then we'll get uh, talking about how to play it and try and to get the most out of it and make this grind as painless as possible. Um, I can't. Uh, I can't say it's going to be uh, pain free, but you know, uh, it might not be as bad as, um, as some people's experiences in this tank. Uh, so, um, fully upgraded, it has 2100 hit points, and you are going to need those hit points because uh, it's hard to play a, a game where you don't get a shot at all. You, you're so big, your concealment rating is so bad, your view range is so poor you will be outspotted by pretty much everything. You are such a large, slow, lumbering target. Um, you are going to need to sort of trade effectively, which means you are going to get hit. Um, so yeah, uh, trading is your best option, I feel. Um, and even then, it's still a hard kind of uh, play style to, to do with this tank because of what we are about to discuss. Um, so the view range, 370 meters, is absolutely terrible, and you can get that to just above 400 with a good commander and your equipment. Um, but it's not really um, a problem in the sense that you won't be playing this as a stealthy TD. You're going to want to try and play it mid-range-ish, um, or short range if possible. Um, but that will be made difficult by the god awful gun depression, which we'll get onto in just a second. Uh, mobility wise, it doesn't get any better at all. It has a 900 horsepower engine, but don't be fooled, that's just to get this absolutely massive, slow, lumbering tank around the battlefield. It only has a 7.82 power to weight ratio, it only goes 30 kilometers an hour forwards, and it even struggles to reach that. It only goes 12 kilometers an hour backwards, which is terrible, and its traverse is 22 degrees a second, which is really slow as well, meaning most tanks uh, that you will come across will be able to out traverse you. Um, armor wise, uh, I'll get onto that in the uh, second replay. I'll talk you through the armor a little bit and uh, talk you through my commander and equipment uh, set up there. Uh, so we'll go straight on in into the gun, which is a 30.5 centimeter gun. Um, it's that big because it was intended to be an artillery piece. Um, of course, in, uh, in World of Tanks console, it's a tank destroyer and it just doesn't work. Uh, it only fires 2.33 rounds a minute, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it's not great. The DPM is 2,563 with its AP rounds and 3,262 with its HE and its premium HE rounds. Uh, those rounds, the AP rounds, they deal 1,100 damage and the HE rounds deal 1,400 damage. The penetration on the AP is 283, which is it's okay to go through most plates that you will come across. Um, and the penetration on the HE rounds is 105 on the premium and regular HE. The difference, uh, or the reason, I should say, for the same penetration on the premium and the regular HE is because the premium HE has a bigger blast radius of 12 meters, meaning you are able to sort of get some nice bombardier medals in this tank if you're lucky. Um, you're able to sort of do some nice big splash damage, especially if you fire at weaker armored plates. Um, the shell velocity on these rounds is absolutely terrible because they are massive rounds. Uh, it's 415 meters a second on the AP, 385 on the premium HE, and 355 meters a second on the regular HE rounds. 
Uh, the base reload is really long at 25.7 seconds. The aim time is really big <laughs> at 3.5 seconds. And the accuracy is god awful at 0.5 seconds. And these shells loop. It's weird, you can actually see the physical shell come out of the gun even if you're not using the replay system. It's just a, it's just such a strange, weird, annoying, frustrating tank, especially for me. Um, and now we get on to one of the worst parts of the tank, which is the gun depression. Uh, maybe even the worst tank uh, part of the tank, uh, in my opinion, uh, for me anyway. It's one degree of gun depression. As you can see in the background, I was trying to sort of wedge my tank up to get my gun down on that Super Conqueror, uh, but the physics were saying, no, not today. Um, gun elevation-wise, I guess it's good news. It's 70 degrees. Um, you can fire it from the bottom of the, the cliff on the cliff map right to the top from the bottom, um, but... I mean, it, it's only useful in a, in a handful of uh, scenarios, and I'd rather invest more of those degrees into the depression, um, <laughs> which uh, which is quite ironic because that's probably what this tank will give you. Um, you only carry 20 rounds, uh, but you're not going to get through them really with the long reload. Um, you're probably going to be taken out, or uh, yeah, the game will be over by the time you get to your final sort of five shells. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of just a bit disappointing. It's nice when you hit, you've got that nice alpha damage of 1100 on the AP, 1400 on the HE, you know, it's it's pleasant when you hit and you penetrate. You, you do a lot of splash damage, but it's hard to get your gun on target and it's hard to, you know, ch choose the right sort of... Uh, the right positioning on the maps um, I found the best kind of thing to do in this tank is to sort of set defensive positions uh, make sure you've got escape routes behind you where or like ridges where you can sort of bump your tank up and get your gun down or fire from above your enemies um, now we'll talk a little bit about um, the gameplay in the background uh, basically I've uh, this is one of the first games I played when it was fully sort of upgraded and I've just kind of played around with the the two different ammo types um, I've set up a defensive location I've tried different positions to see just how bad this gun depression is and as you can see um, it, it would do better because of the show shell, shell velocity um, up close and personal and because of the bad accuracy but um, it doesn't really uh, have the armor, it doesn't have the gun depression or the mobility to be able to use a lot of positions. So it's kind of redundant in a lot of uh, games. You're, you're completely a support tank. You don't really have much influence on the game. You can you can still try, but there are tanks that are just so, so much better at influence in the battle. And that brings us uh, sort of nicely to the end of that first game, the first replay, uh, where we um, finish with 4.8k direct damage, 483 assistance, one kill, finish top of our team, which isn't too bad. And this kind of damage is quite good for a tank like this. This is has one of the lowest, I think it is the lowest um, requirements for marks in tier 9, which just shows how bad this tank is. So that's enough for the first replay. We'll head on into the second replay and I'll talk you through uh, some more details of this tank. So we're now into the second replay of the video and I'll just talk you through actually a little bit about the armor uh, very quickly and then I'll talk you through my equipment and commander setup and then we'll get talking about the gameplay and how to play this monstrosity of a vehicle. Uh, so armor wise the cheeks of the sort of superstructure bit there at the top of the, the superstructure are 210 millimeters you're not going to get you know much more effective angling than sort of about 250 to 60 millimeters if you angle it at a 45 degree angle um yeah most things at 10 9 and 10 are sort of going to just go straight through you um you then get a little bit around the mountain of 200 millimeters and that's not angled so that will be even sort of uh even weaker it's um it's a slim shot um but people that are firing at your cheeks uh, are likely to hit that occasionally then you go on to your upper hull which is 130 millimeters of sloped back armor but you know angling at 45 degrees again you're looking at sort of getting maybe 240, 250 millimeters maximum, maybe ever so slightly more. And again, most things at tier 9 and 10 are going to go straight through you. Even tier 8, you know, loading gold are going to go through that as well. 
and then you have your lower plate of 100 millimeters, your side uh, armor at 100 millimeters, and your rear armor at 100 millimeters, and that that's just not going to cut it at tiers eight, nine, and ten, and things are going to go through you. And you're such a large profile that people are just going to be able to, you know, track you, get around you, shoot you from the side as you're moving, and they're just going to be able to fire straight at you. And if people fire you know, gold at you, which, you know, is often the case, people preload the gold, I, I do it in, you know, some of my tanks, then they will just absolutely butter you, so, yeah, don't rely on your own, your armor, angle, steel, obviously, try and do the best you can, um, you never know, you might bounce some shots, um, hopefully I get a shot on this Leopard 1 in the background, and he won't bounce this premium HE round, this sort of little sticky out gun bit here is in the way, but I'm hoping I can get a shot as he reverses, and I think I do, I can't quite remember, so I'll, I'll watch this with you and then we'll go talk about my equipment and commander setup. I'm um, just sort of pre-aiming, hoping that he's going to go, but unfortunately I don't connect, so I swivel my tank around, auto-aim, and fortunately the shell flies true and we do 1391 damage, so yeah, a slight low roll, but the bat chat finishes off the Leopard 1 there, and it, it's satisfying when that happens, but that's a rare occurrence, and that was extremely lucky there. Uh, no skill on my part, but you know, hey, I'll, I'll take all I can get with this tank. <laughs> so, equipment wise, I run advanced loader because the reload is so long. I run advanced gun lane drive because that uh, that re uh, that reload that um, aim time is so long, and I want to get it down, you know, as low as possible, so I don't have to sit out in front of my opponents even more than I have to. And you do have to quite often in this tank because just just because of the gun depression because it's so awkward and here I've kind of said oh what the hell I'll slide down in the background and I'm gonna get a shell premium H shell switch to the um, premium HE and uh, get it into the back of that super conqueror and that leads me nicely onto my third um, piece of equipment which is the advanced reload which means I can switch shells without a reload penalty and as you can see there I was able to switch from an AP round to a premium HE, so I was able to penetrate the rear of that Super Conqueror. And again, we switched to a uh, AP round there to be able to finish off that Super Conqueror. And now I'm going to come up behind this E75 and I'm trying to use my sort of grunt in my engine to push this E75 in front of my um, friendly tanks. Unfortunately for me, it looks like this is probably going to be my last shell, but we have a nice AP shell into the turret of that E75 taking our damage total to 5k. So commander wise, I run 6th sense, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot, track mechanic, situational awareness, and armor angling. And I believe this crew might have been in my Jagdpanzer E100, hence the track mechanic and the armor angling, but it does come into sort of use with this tank and uh, the gun handling skills sort of a self-explanatory and 6th sense and born leader you know, are, are scales that I take on every uh, every tank that I have, or every commander I have, should I say. Um, so with all of those uh, commander scales and all of that equipment, I now have a 411 meters view range, which isn't great, but it's still better than 370. My concealment rating is 410, so it's absolutely awful because you are such a large, large profile tank. I have a 0.44 accuracy, just shy of three second aim time, um, a 19.14 second reload and my DPM is now 3.4k with AP and 4.2 with HE. So as you can see, unfortunately, um, I finished that battle um, a little bit too early, but my team was my, I did manage to take that one down and this is the first time I finished MVP in this tank. So <laughs> I finished with 5k direct damage. Unfortunately, I didn't get the mastery badge but we pick up 385 assistance as well and one kill. So that's it for the second replay. We're heading on into the third one and hopefully we'll see some more, you know, big shots and we'll be able to see how I try and maneuver this thing around the battlefield and get my shells on target. So see you there in a bit. So we're now into the third and final replay of the video and we're here on cliff. So let's see if I get to use that um, 70 degrees of gun elevation uh probably not but you never know i might be uh i might be so lucky so what kind of tactic do i use in the bear to make it um to make it sort of grindable to make it you know so i don't want to you know rage uninstall this tank 
I basically try and set up a defensive location um, if I'm able to to cover a flank uh, and this is the perfect example of of that so I'm sat up here at the back where you know a lot of tank destroyers like to sit anyway I do run the risk of being spotted if something rushes the middle there um, but I'm hoping I can just sort of tuck into this little hill on my left hand side um, as you can see here I'm struggling with gun depression this is one degree is at work here as you can see I'm <laughs> I'm still like four, 490 500 meters away and I'm struggling to get my shell on target but I found a sort of position here where there's a little a little slope behind me and I'm angling my tank up on it to get my shells down and we managed to get an HE round into the top of that super heavy and super heavies at distance I, I try and fire um, HE if I know that I'm not going to be able to penetrate the tank uh, and that's basically because you know I want to do some damage this does do some substantial splash damage with that 12 meters blast radius and I want to try and track opponents damage modules and set fires and if you track your opponents you know you get all that nice assistance and yeah you, ha you have that chance of the fire you have that, the chance of damaging uh, modules on enemy tanks and I struggled playing this tank at the start, playing too aggressively, um, I got caught out by the gun depression, I got you know infuriated by it, because up close and personal you, you just struggle to get shots in on anything really, um, unless you're able to find like a slope where you can put your gun down on, or unless you're sort of coming over the top of a hill and shooting downwards, it's almost impossible on lower profile tanks, like perfect example straight in front of me was that Camp Panzer 50 ton. If he came up and face hugged me, I wouldn't be able to shoot him, and he'd just be able to shoot me with impunity. So we do get spotted there, but we do aim pre-aim that corner and get a lovely looping shell into the top um, of that 50. Uh, I think it was a 50 TP or a 50 TP prototype, or something like that. Can't quite remember. But we do also set a fire and get a uh, yeah, get a bit more damage uh, up to 1200. And now I'm just using these rocks as cover. Uh, I'm actually, um, it looks like, joint spotting those tanks in front of me, which is nice. Um, yeah, don't rely on that in this tank. The view range is terrible. Uh, I'm basically just trying to use people um, at the moment in front of me to spot for me. And I'm just going to be able to support them. And that's what you've got to do in this tank. You've just got to try and support them. Um, you definitely cannot be the one to sort of be the aggressor in this tank it's almost impossible to do that well I mean sometimes you're gonna have to go for it if, if the situation requires you but you are a support tank you're uh, a terrible version of artillery in tank destroyer form um, but you never know you might get these these games that just work out for you where you do a substantial amount of damage the tanks just come in front of you and uh, I'm just hoping now that that Waffle Panzer 4 comes out in front of me and I'm able to penetrate his turret with an HE round I get spotted and I know there's loads of other tank destroyers probably there, the other three tank destroyers on the enemy team are at the back, um, so I'm just going to tuck in behind this rock, get re-stealthed and then sort of try and come out again, maybe from a different angle, because uh, you will be blind fired if you keep going back to the same position. So I'm probably going to try and move up in a minute from rock to rock. As you can see I'm still struggling with that gun depression, you have to reverse up a long way sometimes to get your shells to loop in. Um, and one tactic to use if you are um, shooting over a ridge line and it's a sort of minor ridge line is to auto aim auto aim and if you see that your reticle sort of turns like you know the red or whatever color you use so that you're locked on it means you've got a shot on them and you're able to fire um, your shell over that ridge because the shell arc is so high it goes so high um, it sort of loops and it's not like a, a straight sort of shell like an APCR shell would be. It doesn't just fire directly from the gun straight. This one goes up and over. So you are able to fire over ridge lines even if they can't see you. So that is a tactic to use if there's an enemy on a shallow sort of ridge in front of you. Auto aim and see if you have a shell. And if you are, let it fully aim and try and loop the shell over like an artillery would do. And yeah, try and try and get your damage in that way. Um, unfortunately I didn't have a fantastic example to show you of that um, I have examples of it but it was in games you know where uh, I think I did absolutely no damage and I probably uh, <laughs> deleted the replay whereas I probably should have kept it but now I just um, I've just gone forward a little bit more to this rock um, <laughs> things weren't getting spotted for a while I was getting a bit stagnant and I was getting a bit impatient and that can happen quite often in this tank you know it gets very it gets very sort of um, 
frustrating to play this tank because you are waiting for those shells to come in. You're waiting for the opportunity. You're struggling with your gun depression. Your you know your mobility is isn't good. So you're, you've got to try and get to a position and stick with it for the whole battle. Um, obviously, if you can relocate, you should, and it's not working for you. But in a lot of positions on a lot of the open maps, you are not going to be able to relocate in the time that is needed and by relocating you will expose yourself to the enemy um, so I'm just trying to make do with what I have and that's what I meant about sort of getting a defensive location trying to cover a flank picking you know some some heavy tanks uh, or places where you know lights and mediums are going to spot for you and be that support tank at the back firing your rounds off and I highly recommend you choose that advanced reload um, skill, uh, skill, I mean the piece of equipment. Um, it's extremely helpful uh, just because you're able to switch between your rounds and if that opportunity arises, should you need to fire the AP, you're able to switch to it. And should you need to fire HE, or we'll have the opportunity to fire at something like a, you know, a Waffly 100 or a Leopard 1, something with no armor, you can switch that instantly and get that little bit of extra damage. And that's how I'll try and make this sort of tank work for me. So there we can see the power of that blast radius. We do sort of over 600 damage just by splashing that Valor. We track him in place and we get all that nice juicy assistance. And that's how I've been trying to sort of increase my XP in this tank. Just by getting that assistance damage. Uh, if, if you're not able to penetrate, a great tip is to shoot, you know, underneath the lower plate um, of the tank in front of you because your shell will splash up into the armor where there isn't any armor or very thin armor underneath the tank and you should be able to do a lot more splash damage and if you're going to just splash a tank like a super heavy try and go for um, the weakest part so you know the lower plate underneath the lower plate or maybe a, a hatch or something like that or a cupola uh, you will do more splash damage um, of course, if needs be, just go for the tracks, go for the tracks and help your teammates out. Um, those are all things that you can do to try and, you know, increase your chances of helping your teammates out and trying to improve your win rate in this vehicle. And this vehicle is probably one of one of very few tanks I have in my garage now that have a sub 50% um, win rate overall. Uh, there are a few from when I started playing and I was absolutely terrible and I didn't have a clue what I was doing but any tank that I've sort of played in the last maybe four four years ago to this day um, I have over 50% wins in and it just goes to show that you know even a, a relatively experienced player like myself just just can't sort of get the wins in this tank or can't be as influential as you want to be um, of course there are players that probably will you know have a really good win rate in this tank but i think f as a norm this is performing really badly i can't remember what they said on stream the win rate the win weight the win rate was um but it wasn't very good and that was the reason they were looking at you know potential buffs to this tank and i think just just some more gun depression um some more mobility would absolutely do wonders for this tank just give it an <laughs> a slight bit more flexibility and it will help dramatically so we're in a really awkward position in this battle um, we're only on 140 hit points left we've come to this rock here and it's all just about surviving now um, i'm just trying to help my teammates out by uh, spotting the tanks that are surrounding me but unfortunately we get taken down um, not without a sort of final sort of stand no we we did relocate trying to get to that rock where these two heavies are here but it was kind of it was kind of uh, game over at that point we were getting surrounded and we would have lost the game anyway but we end up picking up you know a, a decent amount of uh, damage in this tank and the highest combined damage that you'll see in all of these replays today of course I've done higher direct damage and I, I just wanted to, to include this replay to show you sort of how I try and how I try and play a tank like this where you know there's a corridor that heavies like to brawl down. I want to try and be that supporting tank at the back, tracking them, putting in shots where I can. But I think it's good to show these defeats with this tank as it shows just how difficult this tank is to play. It's definitely not a tank for a new player, and if you're an experienced player, you you probably just won't like it and you'll get frustrated with it because it's just yeah, it's just terrible. So we finished that game with 2.4k direct damage and just shy of uh, 3k assistance. We finished third on our team, unfortunately we didn't get any kills, but yeah, it just 
goes to show that try and improve your um, assistance damage um, to go alongside your direct damage and that's how you're going to get your marks and how you're going to get your XP in this tank. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that I've given you a few tips on how to play this tank in terms of shell choices and where to shoot, um, when to shoot sort of AP and HE and just uh, the gameplay in the background showing you how awkward this tank is and what kind of damage you're expected to have on a good game um, on a on a bad game uh, regular games you're lucky to sort of do 2k average which is actually about the requirement for the fourth mark or the gold mark of excellence so if you do that congratulations <laughs> so anyway thanks you all thanks you all thank you all so much for watching uh, i hope you all have been a great week and you had a great weekend uh, i hope you all have a nice this uh week this week and enjoy the content coming out tomorrow i think it is just uh, probably a reskin tank but you know we're kind of used to that now and i'll get some more videos out soon so until then i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now